This video is part one of five and we will be focusing on the project selection theory for basic project selection techniques. We will be focusing on the background of the project um, selection theory. We will be discussing the payback period, return on investment, net present value, and the internal rate of return theory. The other, other videos that forms part of this series is part 2 of 5, which is the payback period examples that we will be doing in a separate video. Part 3 of 5, return on investment example. Part 4 of 5, a net present value example. And then part 5 of 5, the internal rate of return example. These videos you can access through my YouTube channel. You can type Peter Aramayr in the YouTube search to find the channel. And in the channel you can go to the playlist Basic Project Selection Techniques. Now the project selection basics will outline the basics for evaluating and ranking possible projects using numerical models. The numerical models is financially focused and it will quantify the project in terms of time to repay, that is your payback period, or the return on investment. The four numerical models we will be focusing on in the project selection is the payback period, return on investment, the net present value, and the internal rate of return. And we use these models to assist decision making in project selection. So we've got the maybe one, two or three projects and we need to decide based on these financial models which project will be the best for the organization uh, to do. Now if we look at payback period theory, the payback period is a time that it takes to gain a financial return equal to the initial investment or the original investment we made and it is normally expressed in years and months. That is the time to recover the initial investment. Now a basic example is, first of all we've got a project, let's call it project A, which is a, we've, where we've got an initial investment which is $50,000 and then we've got a yearly cash flow of $20,000 for year one, $30,000 for year two, and $25,000 for year three for project A. Now the payback period is let's say 50,000 minus 20 is 30,000 and 30,000 minus 30 is zero. So the payback period for project A will be two years. And now for project B, we've got an initial investment of $50,000. So minus 50 plus 20 for year one is 30,000. 30 minus 15 is 50,000 remaining for year two and then 15 minus 50 is zero. So our payback period for project B is three years. And we will select project A because it's got the shortest payback period of two years. Now this is just a basic example for doing the payback period on projects. The advantage of the payback period is it's simple, easy and quick evaluation method and it is just high level. It ad identifies a project that provides the fastest return or payback and it reduces the um, project exposure to risk by selecting the shortest project period. However, the disadvantage, it does not take the time value of money into consideration. It does not consider cash flow after the initial investment and it does not quantify the project risk exposure. Now you can also go to part 2 of 5 
video on YouTube where I will be doing a payback period example. Now the return on investment is where the project are compared based on their profit and percentage return and it takes the entire cash flow of the project into consideration. The basic formulas for return on investment is your average annual profit equals to the total gain or the income minus the total outlay or expenses divided by the number of years times 100 on one. The return on investment is then your average annual profit, which you've calculated with the first formula, divided by the original investment. And the highest return on investment will be selected. The advantage, it's a simple technique. It takes the cash flow of the entire project into consideration. And the disadvantage, it averages out the profit over the successive years and it does not take the time value of money into consideration. You can go to part 3 or 5 video on YouTube for the return on investment example. Now the net present value is a discounted cash flow technique which means that it takes the time value of money into consideration and the time value of money means that one dollar today will not have the same buying power as one dollar a year later due to inflation. A year later the one dollar will have less buying power. And the net present value is now the opposite of interest which is used in a savings account. If you invest one dollar today at a 10% interest per year, the one dollar will be worth 1.1 dollar a year later and 1.21 dollars two years later and $1.33 dollars three years later. Now the net present value measure measures the access or the shortfall of the cash flow measured in the present value term. If you were offering $110 a year from today, that is the future value, and the inflation and interest is combined 10%, the value today, which is a present value, is worth a hundred dollars. Now when the present value of a cash flow over a number of years are combined, the total value is called the net present value. The basic formulas that we will be using, the present value is a discounted cash flow times the future value. Now the discounted cash flow is 1 divided by 1 plus i, which is your interest rate, to the power n, which is the number of years from the start of the project. And the present value is the future value divided by 1 plus i to the power n. Now the net present value is the sum of all the present values based on the cash flow time frame. Now the cash flow equals to the income minus expenses which is our future value. And the highest net present value um, will be selected. The advantages, it introduces the time value of money, the future, future cash flow is expressed in today's value which enables direct comparison, it considers the entire project from the start to the finish and the disadvantages the accuracy is limited to the forecasted cash flow and interest rate so it really depends on how accurate you do your cash flow and using a fixed interest rate over the project duration however it can be adjusted to accommodate a varying interest rate and to watch an example of net present value you can go to part four or five of the video on YouTube. And your internal rate of return is another discounted cash flow technique where the profitability is expressed as a percentage. The internal rate of return is the discounted rate or interest rate when the net present value is zero. 
It is calculated through a trial and error process by adjusting your discounted or your interest rate incrementally until the net present value is zero. Or you can plot the net present value. The basic formula is your net present value, which is zero, is the sum of all the present values based on the cash flow. The discounted rate is calculated through a trial and error process and the project with the highest internal rate of return should be selected when comparing projects. Thank you for watching this video and if it was helpful please like it. You can click the link below to watch some of my other project management related videos or you can type in Peter Rademeyer in the YouTube search to find my YouTube channel.